Hey you guys, welcome back to the channel Physics Sergi and here we are in JE Mains debated question series. This is a old series. I've done, uh, uh, I think two or three videos on this particular series in a long time back. Now that the JE Mains exam is coming closer, I would try to revive this series, try to come up with intriguing and debatable questions from the past year papers of JE Mains, both online and offline. So this is a question from 2016 paper. Uh, and uh, this is on the essence of the concept of bulk modulus and volume stress. Okay, so here we are going to debate whether the key actually finally given by the JE Mains people is it right or wrong. And through this particular process, we'll try to come closer to understanding the concept of bulk modulus. Okay, so here we go with the formal wording of the question that was given in that JE. This was from online April 10, 2016 paper. Okay, so. Uh, you want to give it a try with an unbiased mind and try to check whether the key is correct or not. Um, pause the video here, go through the question, attempt it for 45 seconds to one minute and try to come back for the concept and then the solution explanation completely. Okay, so here we go. A bottle has an opening of radius A and length B. The cork of length B and radius A plus delta A, where delta A is very small compared to the original length A, is compressed to fit into the opening completely. Okay, so the cork has to be compressed so that it fits the bottle. If the bulk modulus of the cork is B and frictional coefficient between the bottle and cork is mu, then the force needed to push the cork into the bottle, right? Already cork is outside, you have to push it in against the friction by applying a force. Okay, so he has given four options try your best okay so i'll first show the solution that je actually assumed to give a key and try to debate on that first okay so here's a solution that you can actually find in uh, on the internet and also many standard uh, previous years question books in the market which i have a problem with okay so solution assumed by je to provide the final key is very simple uh, stress is equal to normal force by area on the sides of this and the normal N, let's suppose, which we'll use in kinetic friction or the limiting friction. Area, they take it as 2 pi into radius into length. Radius is A, the length is B. And then they write the stress value is bulk modulus into strain. Please do understand there's a problem with this because the formula is correct if this is volume stress versus volume strain relation. That's how the bulk modulus is defined. Volume stress is a stress that is applicable on the entire volume, not just on the circumference, which is what is happening when you're pushing it into the uh, bottle cork. Okay, so my main contention here is that this is not bulk stress because the bulk stress diagram requires that the force that you're applying on the circumference the curvilinear circumference, the same force you should have applied on uh, or the same pressure you should have applied on the flat surface too. Then only you can use the bulk stress formula. Okay, so that is where the problem starts here and therefore the final answer and the key that is option D that was given was wrong. Okay, so this is just circumferential stress. Remember when you are pushing it in, the push is applied as a separate force on the top. That force is different from Right, so this is an applied force, let's suppose that you are looking at. This force has nothing to do with the bulk stress idea. So apart from this delta P and delta P, there should be an extra force here, okay? So to push it in, and that is different from this particular diagram. So I'll try to erase that extra force. Okay, so the pressure that is applied only on the circumference cannot uh, justify the usage of bulk modulus. Okay, so then how to go ahead and correct this thing? Okay, so before we correct, we need to understand the concept of Poisson's ratio, which relates the uh, longitudinal stress to the lateral stress. Okay, two perpendicular directions of stress. How are they related? They're related using the concept of Poisson's ratio. So we'll go step by step, slowly try to understand the concepts, and then we'll come back to this page to correct the solution. Okay, so here we go. The concept of Poisson's ratio, a lot of things on the board, a lot of colors. So don't worry, we'll go step by step. So whenever you pull on the left side, just concentrate on the diagram here. Whenever you pull a um, object in a longitudinal manner, longitudinal means along the length. That's what the meaning of the word longitudinal mean. Okay. So if you pull it, not only it extends in that direction of the pull, but also there will be change in the length perpendicular to it. That's called lateral. Lateral is a direction perpendicular to longitudinal. In this particular diagram, diagram, X is the longitudinal direction, Z and Y are the lateral directions. And you could see in Z and Y directions, there are some changes in the length. 
So the strain, strain is always associated with change in length. The strain ratio from lateral to longitudinal direction is what the concept of Poisson's ratio deals with. Now, this thing is applied to a special case of a cylinder, let's suppose, of length L and the load or the force that you're applying, which is a pull force on the only um, flat surface causes not only the length to change, but also diameter to decrease in usual situations. So therefore, the lateral strain in this problem would be delta D by D and the longitudinal strain would be delta L by L. And this ratio, the minus sign is to ensure that the sigma is kept positive, okay? And this ratio is called Poisson's ratio, which is this, I, I, they use different symbol in different textbooks. I am trying to use sigma in my video, okay, right? And this practically lies between zero to half and most of our JE mains and advanced problems consider if nothing is mentioned in the question, we do consider the value of sigma is zero. What does that mean? In our problems, if you carefully observe, whenever there was a force which is trying to pull the rod, we never consider the area of cross section to change or the radius of cross section to change. What does that mean? We are only considering the denominator, but the numerator was being taken most of the times, if not mentioned as zero. So most of our JE questions, if no mention is made, uh, we are indirectly taking the value of sigma as zero. When is the other extreme happen? When the value of uh, half happens, the volume is actually going to become zero, the change in volume, I should say, because you all know V is equal to the length into area of cross section, which is related to D square, right? L into D square, if you write the fractional error analysis, you'll get delta L by L plus because of D square term, you'll get two delta D by D for small changes, okay? And then whenever you have delta V zero, you could see that ratio of these two strains becomes half, okay, right? So whenever you take the other half, it is volume change equal to zero. So I say, I repeat, in JE, without any mention of sigma, we assume it is zero, which is what we are going to do in the JE mains problem that we are debating right now, okay? So no, no sigma was mentioned, so I'll take it as zero. So that brings us to the next important segment where relation between Young's modulus, why do we need Young's modulus? Because there is a longitudinal strain. Bulk's modulus, because it was given in the question and the Poisson's ratio. There is an important relation that you can actually prove using a cubical analysis where you push all the sides of a cube of a material with a delta P uniform pressure and then related to the longitudinal and lateral stresses on either X, Y and Z direction. So it's not a very difficult, but a lot of students don't know about this proof. So either you can search for this proof in Google or uh, try for uh, waiting for the future video where I'll try to take it up in an Olympiad series. Okay, so again, for JE Advanced, this proof is not there. Okay, so the bulk modulus can be easily proven to be y divided by 3 into 1 minus 2 sigma. Actually, the proof is in front of your eyes if you are very carefully observing this. Okay, delta d by d. If I write it as delta uh, d by d is uh, minus sigma here, then you, you substitute for delta d by d in terms of delta L by L, you could see one minus two sigma term coming and this you can relate to bulk modulus and this you can relate to Young's modulus. So that's where the proof immediately comes for a cylinder, okay? So in our special situations of considering sigma equal to zero, we end up getting y is equal to three B, which is a very important relation that I'll use in the correction of the key given by JE mains, okay? so. With y is equal to 3b uh, already ascertained, let's move forward. Again, a lot of things. Let's correct the solution by taking three steps, okay, one after another. So follow my lead. The assumption made by uh, JE in writing bulk stress is only correct if the pressure not only acted on the curved surface, but also push the flat surfaces from all directions. If the pressure is uniform, then only bulk stress is being considered. Then only volume stress is being considered. Okay, right. So the value of bulk modulus is the volume stress applied all directions divided by volume strain, which is delta V by V. Okay, which will write in terms of delta L by L. Don't worry about that. And then because I push it down and there would be a delta L compression that could happen, which is not needed in the final answer because there was no mention of any change in length. There was only mention of change in radius. So to make that correction, I'll pull that length back in my mind, right? Using the same pressure, which was push. Now I'll use it as a pull force, okay? So delta P, I know it's not called pressure, but the same magnitude of force per unit area I'll use here to pull it back to original length. 
Okay, right. So whatever assumption is there, I make the correction so that I can get back to the reality. So in this problem of correction, if this was a separate problem, the force per unit area is going to be called here as longitudinal stress. And you know, longitudinal stress divided by longitudinal strain should be defined as Young's modulus. Okay, so this you keep in mind. I'll re re relate this to using Y equal to 3B relation. Now, in reality of this particular bottle cork problem, you have only uh, pressure applied on the circumference. I already used the word circumferential stress. And use the relation that I had in the previous page, delta V by V for a cylinder is delta L by L plus 2 delta D by D. And then you write delta V by V um, in terms of here. Can you see B times of delta V by V? I substituted that. And for delta V by V, uh, whatever I could get this particular part here, right? And then what you do is E individually, this delta L by L, I'll replace it with the Y versus P delta P relation. Okay, so let's go slowly, right? We're almost there. I'll just push it up so that you can follow the things, uh, right? So follow my lead here. So the value of delta L by L, I'll substitute as delta P by Y. Can you see this term is here? and 2 delta d by d from the uh, parameters used in the question uses the radius as a, right? So delta d by d or delta r by r or delta a by a, all, all the three would be same. So I've just changed it to the parameters used in the question. So you have got a relation here, right? Now get all delta p's onto one side by using b by y here is one by three. Can you see b by y is one by three? So this part would be one by three. When it comes to this side, it will become two by three times of delta p. And this b goes in and makes this term. Okay, right? Why am I el eliminating v? Why? Because y was not given in the question. You, you, were, you were expected to write everything in bulk modulus, even though volume stress was not applicable. Okay, right? So this uh, gives you delta b is three times of b delta by a by a. Okay, right? And this is where the things uh, went bad last uh, in the JE solution. You got a two here instead of a three, which is a huge mistake. Okay, so the force with which you should pull it out is a limiting friction force, which is mu times of that normal reaction acting on the circumference. Remember, this normal reaction was only acting in this figure here. How do you write that normal reaction from all directions? It would be the uh, circumferential stress delta P multiplied by curved surface area. That's what I've written here, right? Delta P into 2 pi radius into length, A into B. And for delta P, I'll substitute this 3 here, you could see three multiplied by two, you should have got a six instead of the four in the answer or the J key that was given. Okay, so let's go back and correct that so that we'll remember. So this was the mistake here. So this should have been six times instead of four and which you cannot find, this should have been actually deleted, right? But J E kept the key for reasons known to them. And it was unfair on the students who actually did this questions correctly. One of my students actually lost on uh, uh, AR1 during this exam so that I remember it very clearly, right? So that's it. And many such J mains debated questions, not debated always doesn't mean that you're going to have wrong keys, but uh, multiple solutions. And then you can have a conceptual in-depth uh, analysis that is needed to solve such questions. I'll try to bring as many of them as possible before your February exam. I'm, I'm also going to continue my revision series that I've already started to look. Please do check out all the revision series uh, videos that I've already done. Um, um, link is in the i button above and also the rest of the series that are running parallelly all the links of the playlists are in the description below you can go and check through them and please do like share and subscribe to my channel if you like the content the uniqueness of it and the elaborativeness in with which i try my best uh, to bring it to you people right so i hope you understand my passion and therefore please do keep supporting the way you have done so far right see you in the next one